Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the first term of a sequence given by this equation a sub n plus 1 equals a sub n plus a sub n minus 1. And we're going to be looking for a sub 1, but of course we're also going to be finding the general term. Does this look familiar to you? If it does, then let's see how this proceeds. If n is greater than or equal to 2, then this, this equation is valid because the first term is going to be a sub 1. So I'm going to go ahead and set a sub n equal to r to the power n. And then from here we get the following. a sub n plus 1 is just going to be r to the power n plus 1. And a sub n minus 1 is going to be r to the power n minus 1. We're just replacing basically n with n minus 1 and n plus 1. Okay. Now let's go ahead and plug all these in to our equation. We get r to the power n plus 1 equals r to the n plus r to the n minus 1. Now we can kind of split this up into r to the n times r. And this one we can take out an r to the n and get 1 plus r to the power negative 1, which can be written as 1 over r. Now, if r to the power n does not equal 0, which would mean r does not equal 0, we can go ahead and cancel out r to the n from both sides. And that's going to give us an equation. We can multiply both sides by r. That gives us r squared equals r plus 1. Nice. Now, let's go ahead and subtract r plus 1 and solve this equation with the quadratic formula. We get two solutions. 1 plus minus 5 divided by 2. Again, I'm going to say, does this look familiar? Hopefully it does. Now, since a sub n equals r to the n is a solution, then c times, like a constant times that is also a solution. And the general solution actually can be written as follows, because there are two solutions. So we can write the general solution as a linear combination of the two solutions. So a n, I guess a sub n, a n, same thing. a n would be a constant times r1 to the n and another constant times r2 to the n. Make sense? Awesome. But since we know the values of r1 and r2 from here, we can go ahead and write the general term as c1 times 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the power n plus c2 times 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the power n. Okay, so that will be the general term. Wait a minute, can we determine c1 and c2? Actually, not without knowing some terms, such as a1 and a2. So currently, a1 would be, if you replace n with 1, c1 times 1 plus root 5 over 2, plus c2 times 1 minus root 5 over 2 and a2 would be found similarly, right? But here's the thing. This is a special sequence. So if I gave you the first two terms, then here's how it proceeds. So suppose a1 equals a2, and they're both equal to 1. What would happen in that case? And we also had, n for n greater than or equal to 2, we had a n plus 1 equals a n plus a n minus 1. In other words, you take the two consecutive terms, add them up, that gives you the next term, right? That's going to look familiar to you in a little bit. Let's go ahead and do the following. Now, if I go ahead and set up two equations, since I know the first two terms, so replace n with 1 and n with 2, then that would give me c1 times 1 plus root 5 over 2, and I know I wrote that already, I'm just going to repeat that. This is equal to 1. And then if you replace n with 2, we're going to square same constants. And this time it's still going to be 1. So this gives us a system of two equations. And guess what? This is a linear system because it's a system in C1 and C2. From here, C1 turns out to be, without further ado, I'm going to give you the values, 1 over root 5. And C2 is going to be negative 1 over root 5. Interesting, right? And guess what? A n from here is going to be the famous Fibonacci sequence. Now we can go ahead and write it as follows. 
and this will basically give you the general term of the Fibonacci sequence. The famous, or should I say infamous, right? Okay, cool. Now, obviously, you can go ahead and replace n with a bunch of numbers, and what you're going to notice, and this is amazing, every time you're going to get an integer. So it's going to look like this. 1, 1, the first two terms were given, and if you replace n with 3, you're going to get a 2, and then 3, and a 5, and an 8. But wait a minute, this also follows the general or the original rule, which said add the two terms and then get the next one. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5. You get the idea? So this sequence actually have lots of lots of interesting properties, including the golden ratio. Ta-da! Okay, the famous golden ratio, and we're going to be using a special letter, a Greek letter for that. But here's the thing. What's the relationship between the terms of the sequence and the golden ratio? And here's what it is. If you take the limit as n approaches infinity. Now, notice that I used fn because it's referring to Fibonacci sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the limit of the two consecutive terms. Obviously, the terms get larger and larger, so we're kind of dividing the larger one by a smaller one, so the limit is probably going to be greater than 1, right, if it's finite. Now, we can also write this as follows, limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over root 5, because we can replace fn plus 1 with 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the power n plus 1. Just apply the rule, replace n with n plus 1, and you're going to get fn plus 1 as well as fn. And let's go ahead and just plug those in. I'm not going to go into the, the nitty-gritty details of this limit, but I'll tell you that, yes, this limit exists, and it's actually equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2 if you evaluate it. And that's known as the golden ratio, or phi, just like not phi, but phi, like this. And this is also equivalent to, which is interesting, right? This is the golden ratio, but it's also equal to 2 times the cosine of pi over 5, which is 36 degrees, by the way. And we can talk about the golden rectangle, the golden triangle, the golden so on and so forth, so many golden things. But here's the thing, a quick note about the golden ratio, Euclid thousands of years ago, he said that, or he took a number line, or maybe a segment, he divided it into two parts, A and B, such that the longer, the whole thing divided by the longer length is the same as the longer to the shorter, that ratio. And guess what? That ratio is equal to the golden ratio. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.